Sparkhouse Digital Director Training Step One. My name is uh, David Shankinek. I am um, Senior Account Representative for uh, for 1517 Media, Sparkhouse, and all our various iterations of book imprints and what have you. Uh, if you're not familiar with 1517 Media, I encourage you to check us out. There's a wonderful line of uh, books for children and families called Beaming Books that's now available through uh, 1517 Media. Uh, but that's the that's the web address 1517 the numbers 1517 dot media. Okay, so what are we going to do today? Well, first of all, I do want to get into talking about some of the key aspects of of this little community that we have here. Uh, and so I'm going to throw up a, a couple of polling pods here just to find out uh, who is with us. What is your role as it relates to Sparkhouse Digital? Uh, are you a volunteer? Uh, are you um, a youth or, or Christian education professional? Are you pastor, uh, someone else? It's it's always interesting for me to know who's with us. It looks like the volunteers are winning the day in this webinar um, with about 46% uh, of you as volunteers, 31% um, uh, youth or Christian education professionals, and 15% of you are pastors. Welcome one and all. All right, I'm gonna put up another um, poll here to see what is your level of experience when it comes to Sparkhouse Digital. 45% say you are comfortable and eager to learn more. That's really great to know. Um, if you're totally new, uh, I hope I will be breaking up this series of webinars in bite-sized pieces. Again, I'm, I'm this is, I'm not dumping the whole load here. I'm, I'm gonna be primarily focusing on the um, my account area in this first step webinar and uh, talk about uh, some curriculum options if you want to chat about that in the second second half of the webinar. I'm curious what you all are using as well, but I'll be getting into that later if you are familiar, that is, with Sparkhouse Resources. Fabulous, thank you very, very much. Um, all right. Next thing I want to do is talk about key features of Sparkhouse Digital. If you are totally new, which um, apparently 31% of you are, uh, you may not realize that Sparkhouse Digital gives you access, if you subscribe to all three age level modules, to over 15,000 and growing uh, leader resources, um, digital media resources, reproducible resources. Uh, and, and as I say, and growing. Uh, boy, over the course of the past few years, Sparkhouse Digital has been essential for congregations who have really wanted to do Christian education in, in some creative entrepreneurial ways. I mean, we've had to be, the COVID has challenged us, but uh, Christian education directors and volunteers and pastors have risen to the challenge and Sparkhouse Digital has been there for them and was, has been so exciting to see. So this is a growing platform. There's new resources being added and constantly. In fact, I just talked to a couple of our um, developers just prior to this meeting to hear about some of the things that they're offering for fall and Christmas, and it's pretty cool uh, because it's 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 not a static thing at all. Um, there are tools in Sparkhouse Digital. There are uh, planning tools, calendar tools that directors can use uh, to develop your schedules and to make things a little bit easier for their leaders to access content in Sparkhouse Digital. There's a lot of content, uh, but you want to craft that content to fit your local setting, to fit particular um, classes and particular days and particular age levels. And you can do all of that with Sparkhouse Digital. We're not gonna be covering that in this webinar, however. That'll be the topic of the next webinar. Um, so uh, stay tuned. Uh, and as I said earlier, um, we are going to be um, uh, recording this webinar, editing this webinar, and making this webinar available as an on-demand version if any of your other leaders and directors uh, are interested in seeing. Notice I said two words, a leader and director. That are, that's kind of Sparkhouse digital jargon that uh, is really kind of the theme of this particular webinar uh, because they have um, uh, two different roles with two different resources um, uh, in terms of what they can do and how they can do it. and uh, uh, programs that they can make, but I'll be getting that into that here in just a, a little bit. So what else is true of Sparkhouse Digital? You can design 
a, a early childhood Sunday school or youth ministry program that accommodates your unique needs. You can choose your own adventure with di these digital resources. And, um, you know, every congregation is different. Their cycles of Christian education are different. Uh, when they really focus on things like confirmation or um, uh, First Communion or what have you is all different. So uh, that's one of the great advantages of, of using an online platform uh, and, a, and a platform that has resources that are specifically created for 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 mainline congregations uh, that have mainline sensibilities uh, that have uh, trusted high quality resources. I know a lot of you are using Google to find your stuff, <laughs> and and I know that sometimes you can find something that's that's great, and sometimes you just go, oh my goodness, should I use this or not? Well, that's one of the things we think is important about Sparkhouse Digital is we want to give you trusted resources um, that fit your denomination well. All right. Um, so what's included in Sparkhouse Digital? Leader support. So th those of you who are familiar with Sparkhouse Digital, you'll know it's a great place to go to for leader guides. Um, you don't have to worry about who's got the leader guide. If, if you've got different leaders who are leading different sessions over the course of a month, they can all access their um, their content that they need via Sparkhouse Digital. Uh, so leader support is really critical. Uh, Spark Activate Faith even has leader training videos. And um, it's not just the, the, the director guides and leader guides. There's a lot of other ancillary resources that help leaders do uh, what they do um, in the classroom and beyond. Now, when I talk about leader support, what does that mean? Well, if you look at the early childhood modules of Sparkhouse Digital, you'll see Frolic, you'll see uh, World Preschool, you'll see Spark Preschool, all that's included in your um, uh, early childhood module. Frolic, of course, being kind of the flagship resource in the early childhood module with those award-winning books and board books that the curriculum supports. If you're, if you're not familiar with the Frolic Bibles and books, you really ought to check them out uh, on, our, on our website. But how, how much leader support is in there? Well, there's 44 lessons of Frolic Nursery. There's 44 lessons of Frolic Family. That's that's parent and children child classes. Um, uh, Frolic Preschool has 52 lessons. Spark Preschool has 120 lessons. World Preschool has 120 lessons. So that's a lot of leader support in Spark House Digital and a lot of options for you to consider when it comes to early childhood ministry. Likewise, I can say that the children's module in Sparkhouse Digital uh, represents um, a number of curriculum, curricula, Whirl, Spark, Holy Moly, uh, the tween curriculum, curriculum Connect, as well as some other uh, multi-generational content uh, that I'll be talking about a little bit later, Journey Together and a Good Stewards Together, Spark Summer, Renew VBS. Um, again, there's a lot of lessons <laughs> uh, under each of those curricula. 343 for Spark and its various iterations, the classroom iteration, lectionary iteration, and rotation version of Spark. The, this 367 lessons in um, classroom lectionary, all kids world. The all kids is kind of like the one room schoolhouse version of each of those um, resources. And then um, Holy Moly and Connect, a uh, substantial number of lessons. And I should add, I'll explain this in a little bit, most of these curricula have, have um, attending uh, video. Now, Spark doesn't. Sparks are kind of our, our, our flagship curricula, and it's really designed for multiple intelligences. And uh, people sometimes appreciate not having their kids in front of a screen every now, all, all the time, and so Spark really lends itself to that. All right, for youth module, you, again, you'll see Collaborate Confirmation in its various iterations. Yes, there's a, a, a Methodist version. Yes, there's a Presbyterian version. Uh, there's a Lutheran version. Um, the Lutheran version includes um, the, uh, the Bible study. Uh, there's a separate Bible study if you want to do Old Testament, New Testament, and then get into the various faith traditions. Uh, so uh, Collaborate Confirmation is very adaptable for, for many, many settings. Um, the same could be said of reform. Reform is a, a core confirmation, 40 lessons, each with a video, each um, highlighting a key question that, that kids ask about the Bible. That's how reform started. 
we wanted to start with the kind of questions that kid, kids ask, middle school kids ask, and then we built lessons around that. Uh, Traditions also has a Lutheran, Methodist, and Presbyterian version, uh, four sessions each that sort of dig into those various churches' uh, traditions. And then there's a third lessons, Old Testament, New Testament, 15 each in Ancestors. Uh, there's the Here We Stand Lutheran Con Confirmation. Uh, there's the Ecumenical Echo the Story uh, uh, Youth Curriculum, uh, Ecumenical Think, Believe, Do Curriculum, uh, and um, Ecumenical Tween Curriculum Connect. So there's a couple of overlaps uh, between the various um, modules uh, with, for example, Connect, because we know that sometimes people uh, just get the children's module but want a tween curriculum, and sometimes people just get the youth module but want to hit those uh, fifth and uh, fifth and sixth graders. So uh, that's kind of an overview of all the things that you can find leader support, ancillary support in Sparkhouse Digital. Now, in addition to leader support in Sparkhouse Digital, there's digital media, video, lots of video, um, uh, animated video for, for Whirl and Holy Moly and uh, Connect and Reform and uh, collaborate, all of that. Um, and in addition to, to uh, video, there's uh, music <laughs> in Sparkhouse Digital, and not just the scores, but also the MP3 versions, instrumental versions, uh, versions that are sung. Um, if you want to support the, a, a song with PowerPoint, there's PowerPoint slides uh, supporting uh, each um, uh, piece of music in Sparkhouse Digital. So a lot of great resources under the category digital media. Oh, and by the way, somebody wants to ask me, how many animated videos are there in Sparkhouse Digital? Well, there's about, well, not about, there is 560 animated videos. And that's like a three minute to a, a six minute animated video, sometime uh, so, so somewhere in that, that category. Some is, as animated videos are used to as uh, uh, kickstarters to sessions. Some are used to provide more depth to sessions. Each of the uh, curricula use video in, in its own unique way based on the pedagogy uh, that the designers have, have structured their lessons around their curricula around. So anyway, but how many, how much video do you get in Sparkhouse Digital? Digital, that much video. All right, um, what else? Uh, reproducible extras. Uh, so you can uh, download Blackline Masters, quote unquote, if you use the old phrase for um, uh, coloring pages, uh, children's bulletins that can be used during worship to maybe set up the lesson or um, they can be used sometimes as, as lesson pages, activity pages in and of themselves. Um, and then take home pages. So all of that is downloadable from Sparkhouse Digital. Uh, and this just scratches the surface of uh, what you can find. Um, then there's exclusive stand, uh, content like standalone curricula, hybrid learning resources, holiday bonus content. Um, and so here's a standalone curricula for youth. It's called Wholeness and Holiness uh, based on the a book of Leviticus. Um, and and it, it is a, a curricula that's a good example of how Sparkhouse Digital is, is used by, by Sparkhouse. We had a, a significant contribution of a, a useful curricula for youth that we weren't going to really put or really didn't need to be put into print. And so it is found in Sparkhouse Digital in a digital form only. And if you're a subscriber, you get it. And it's one of the examples of that. Um, another example of, of something that proved to be very useful during uh, this whole, these past few years, we, we saw congregations who were uh, just using Sparkhouse resources and pulling them together in various kits and various online learning experiences, hi hybrid learning experiences. Uh, we said, oh my goodness, we know this stuff um, better than anybody. Why don't we do that for them? And so we created a ser two, two series now of digital activity kits. We created one last year, uh, kits for a Lent, summer, fall, and Advent Christmas. And this year we've got our second series for Lent, summer, and fall is about to be released and um, Advent Christmas. And so uh, just uh, one example of, uh, of the kind of overview 
uh, the get started guide of a digital activity kit that um, hosts a, a, a number of resources uh, per those different um, times of the year. Um, I talk about holiday events. There are Christmas programs in uh, Sparkhouse Digital. Um, there's uh, what we call movie uh, festivals, film fests that, that aggregate a variety of the animated videos in Sparkhouse Digital. Uh, those are sometimes uh, organized around uh, specific holidays as well. Um, there are really great resources like this intergenerational reformation event. This came out during COVID, so we really didn't have a chance to, to really celebrate that intergenerational event, but we, if we hopefully can now, at least a little bit more. And, and so that is something you can expect to find as a subscriber to Sparkhouse Digital, uh, holiday resources and events. And then new resources, as I mentioned, we're adding all the time. Um, we added Faith Together at Home uh, to, as a devotional support to those kits that we, people were sending to the houses early on during COVID. Then we, we, we added as people were regathering re in 20, um, 20, 2020 and 2021, um, these intergenerational summer events that we thought would help congregations regather after being separated from one another. And um, then we added uh, digital activity kits and there's more stuff coming all the time. One of the unsung aspects of, uh, of uh, Sparkhouse Digital, if you uh, get the early childhood module, is this uh, automated frolic newsletters. And I'll see, show you how that goes when we go into my account area here in a little bit. But if you have done things like uh, cradle roll in the past, uh, sending out um, cards or uh, newsletters to uh, infants and their families, uh, there's a version of that in Sparkhouse Digital that's automated. You set it up with the children's uh, birthdays and um, various uh, uh, caregiver emails and they can get appropriate, not only in terms of their age, but also in terms of the season, uh, automated newsletters that serve as kind of a digital cradle roll, bridging birth, and your Christian education program. Very cool if you get the early childhood version of um, Sparkhouse Digital. We're going we're to go live on the Sparkhouse Digital right now. Um, hopefully, you are seeing the screen change in front of you as I drag my account over. Uh, do let me know in the questions pod if you can see that I'm, we're live on the site. That's super helpful. Um, and I want to specifically go into the My Account area. If if you are a new subscriber of Sparkhouse Digital, it's really important um, to spend some time in the My Account area because it can really streamline what you are going to be doing in Sparkhouse Digital. I know everyone wants to dive into the resources, um, but if you really want to make Sparkhouse Digital work for you, my account area has some uh, pretty significant things. Um, first of all, the leaders area. You need to know that Sparkhouse Digital, and this is our um, uh, 1517 media account, so I'm just going to scroll down here, and it goes, it's endless, right? You can add as many leaders and directors into Sparkhouse Digital as you want. And so the question that you should be asking yourself at this point is, who needs to have access to Sparkhouse Digital? Who could really benefit from some of the resources that are here? If you are an experienced user, you're comfortable with Sparkhouse Digital, you may still realize that there is content in Spark, Sparkhouse Digital that you never touch. Well, is there someone else in your congregation who could benefit from this content? Maybe it's, it is the pastor um, who's struggling to come up with a children's lesson every Sunday. Well, there's children's messages in Sparkhouse Digital. Maybe it is the music people um, that would love to have access to maybe those, those PowerPoint slides or some of that music content. Just be aware that you can add as many people as you want. And you, you can be creative about this as well. As you think about what leaders you want in Sparkhouse Digital, 
um, you know, especially as we have moved through this period of, uh, of, of sheltering in place, there were many congregations that gave all of their parents leader access to Sparkhouse Digital so their, their kids could watch, stream, or download the Sparkhouse Digital videos, for example, at home, and maybe some lesson content. Um, you can, as we'll learn next, uh, next, in the next webinar, you can add content to calendars. And when you add a con a content to a calendar and you give um, various people access to that content, those, those individuals can go into Sparkhouse Digital, go onto that particular day, and download the resources that you have placed there on that day. Um, we'll be really digging into that more later. I encourage you to play around with it if you so, so desire. But it's really important, I think, to think early on who should have access to Sparkhouse Digital. Now, I know that can be um, uh, uh, kind of confusing in, in multi, uh, large parishes and multi-point um, multi parish situations. And so it's always good to really think about your um, your naming structures <laughs> you know maybe you always want to start, tell your tell your people to 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 register as parent dash so and so or as uh, church dash so uh, such and such a church just so you can keep everyone straight and I'll explain why that can be helpful later but it's good to come up just think through some of those conventions later is really the um, first name, last name convention, what you want to use, or do you want to use uh, some uh, some kind of convention to uh, better organize who is signing into Sparkhouse Digital? By signing into Sparkhouse Digital, I probably ought to show you this page, which is the add new user page. You see how that you can add them by a first name, by last name, email address, and then I always recommend using a generic password. Um, I, you know, this is uh, a password pr protected site, but but it's not your bank account. So I believe that you can use some generic passwords so that you could avoid the whole "what's my password" kind of a kind of a thing. Um, and really, one of the things that's very important to note when you're adding people. It, that you need to let folks know that they have been added. So you probably ought to come up with some email verbiage that you can just drop in, um, you know, what you, how you signed, signed them in um, and, and what password that you use. That, that email and that password will be the critical way that they will then have access. As far as the first name and last name, you can play with those categories a little bit especially if you want to uh, distinguish between the different kinds of users that you are allowing into um, Sparkhouse Digital. So think about that uh, as you think about uh, growing the program. Is it, is it just directors you want to give access to? Is it uh, directors and leaders? I'll, I'll explain a little bit. Do you want to give access to parents as leaders? Or even in one case, I know that there was a congregation that gave access to their confirmands as, as leaders, which I think is a rather uh, interesting thing because now you've got more people who are finding content in Sparkhouse Digital that are getting accustomed to using the site and the wealth of content that's in the site that could potentially be um, future, <laughs> uh, future volunteers as time goes on. So, so definitely think through that that process carefully. And I will say that it is, it is easier when it comes to the planning phase of Sparkhouse Digital when you've got your leaders and directors added from the get-go. Uh, maybe you'll have somebody who says, well, you know, I really can't uh, be a volunteer for uh, Sunday school in the fall of 2020, but um, you know, after my little ones get older, I'd be glad to jump back into the system. Well, <clears throat> you might want to say, gosh, you know, should I add this person now? Um, give them the opportunity to, to access 
content and Sparkhouse Digital as a leader. Now, you may not want to give them director access, which I'll explain here in just a bit, but you know, you certainly could think about who you want to add as uh, leaders or potential leaders or maybe uh, ancillary helpers like pastors and, and music directors and um, you know various youth counselors or what have you. Now, what, what I think is also important as you as you think about um, your leaders that you're adding here, first name, last name, email, generic password, um, what gr age group access do you want to give them? Now, I know that there's Sunday, some Sunday school teachers that will that will only want to see the class that they're in. I only want to see the kindergarten resources. And so that simplifies um, what they have access to uh, significantly. Maybe there's there's somebody who wants to just see everything. You can use the checkbox um, uh, to, to also give them generic access to all content. Here's those two roles that I talked about a little bit, the director and the leader. You can have more than one person who has director access to Sparkhouse Digital. Perhaps you want a director for each age level, or, or maybe you want, you have a, um, a Sunday school uh, administrator that you want to give director access to. Now, what's the difference between director and leader access? Well, directors can create plans. We will be creating a plan when we are together again next. You know, the, the planner is something that you can use to really say, okay, within a certain period of time, we are going to, and on a certain day, we are going to do this lesson, this lesson, this lesson, and this lesson. So that's what the director access can do, is create these, these plans and uh, sign uh, various plans, various lessons, the calendar. The leaders can't do that. They could just get into Sparkhouse Digital and access content that's been assigned to, to a particular calendar day or a series of days. So that's one of the things I think that's really important to, to keep in mind as you think about, does this person need director access or does this person need leader access? Now, the leaders can look for curriculum and, and download curriculum, but they cannot um, adjust the director's plans. So, um, so that's that's really important. Um, I see a quick question here. Need to download how to download lessons and guides. Uh, okay, we'll we'll do we'll definitely do that for you, Heather. That's a very specific question, and I can certainly do that um, when we're here in this time together. And feel free to uh, ask some of those kind of specific questions. I'm going to continue to go through the my account area. Hopefully, the the um, the section about adding leaders is is important and uh, something you're already working on, even if you haven't made plans yet. And the reason I say that is if you want to assign specific days to specific people, they really need to be in uh, Sparkhouse Digital as a leader before you can assign them uh, a, a, a set of lessons on a calendar day that you've chosen. So um, getting those leaders and directors into Sparkhouse Digital early on is, is extremely helpful and adds a lot of um, efficiency to what you are doing. So I'm gonna really stress that, stress that point. Um, under um, downloads, and this is another really useful uh, section of your My Account area, you have the ability to see who is downloading what. Now, one of the things that's really important to note is that you know the various um, uh, resources that you are assigning to a particular uh, day or what have you really need to be accessed if the teacher is going to be teaching on that particular day. You can double check to see if they have the resources that they need, or you can say, well, Hmm, I, I'm not seeing that they're downloading and it's and it's it's their Sunday's coming around the corner. I, I might want to get a hold of them. And so that download area in um, 
in the my account area is, is really important. And if you want to double check what that lesson is, you can download that lesson. If you just want to say, okay, what was that again that I assigned? Okay, you can you can hit the download button. So, all right, I'm going to go back to the my account area and just talk a little bit about, about the subscription. This is where you um, you manage your subscription, where you put in the various uh, 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 folks that you have as administrators, your contact information, et cetera, et cetera. So definitely, you know, just you, you'll want to keep that up to date, so that you know we are interacting with the with the right people in your in your congregation. Um, you'll see the subscription renewal dates, et cetera, et cetera, under manage my, my subscriptions. All right, so. Heather, you've got a very uh, particular question. You need to know how to download lessons and guides. Again, there's a couple ways to do this. You can choose a lesson. Um, let's see, in the children's area, let's go into World, the All Kids, explore all the lessons. Here are the various um, semesters of World, All Kids, explore. And so if you wanted, to, to download Year Gold Fall, you could actually click this button and you could download all the content for Year Gold Fall in one, one fell swoop, right? So, and that will then uh, appear in your tray. Uh, there's a lot of content. I don't think I'm going to do that. I'm thinking I'm going to just pick one. Um, so, I'm going to just download this one. And, and by, I, I should say, this is world, all kids. So you're seeing all of these items included in your download. If you hit the arrow, you'll dig into it a little bit deeper. So you've got a, your coloring page, leader guide, leaflet preview, the uh, the video, which is actually a two part download. Um, if you haven't, if you're not familiar with the download process in Sparkhouse Digital. Video, of course, is a uh, a bigger file, and so the web developers have decided to um, have a two part download. So you have to, and when you hit download select, so if I select all of these and download select, you'll see that the video pops up as a separate download. Well, that's because it just takes longer to do, and you don't want to have to wait for everything in the video to download to get your stuff so it's a it's a two-part process to download a, a video and it, and it should be noted that you can also stream the videos if you have really a good internet um, in your congregation or you can download them make them available on um, maybe thumb drives for the teachers or what have you I don't know what kind of uh, TVs you have um, a lot of a lot of TVs these days. You can stick a USB in the side and uh, or hook uh, download it and hook your computer up to it. Or even now, cast mirror, uh, cast right to a a smart TV from whatever device that you're using. So there's all kinds of different ways to play those videos. Now your subscription to Sparkhouse Digital gives you licensing to use those videos. Um, that license is done. You don't own the videos. You're licensing to use the videos. That license is done when your subscription is done. Um, and you don't have permission to use them in any kind of an open access kind of way. You can't just pop a video onto a Facebook page. Um, because it is copyrighted content, you need to keep your videos uh, behind some kind of password protected uh, place. So if you say to your um, church, for example, we're going to create a private Facebook group that only our members have access to, yeah, you can put the video there, or I'm going to create a, a um, Google Drive uh, uh, section that is just for a Sunday school. Yes, you can put your, your videos there, but just be aware, you don't own, you don't own the videos. You, you are, your subscription gives you access to license them, but then to download, it's an all clearly an all honor system, download or stream as best you can. Um, so that's something uh, about the downloads. I did want to actually go back a little bit, Heather, um, because you know each of these items could be downloaded separately. So if you want to view this, uh, maybe you don't want to use everything that's on here. 
um, maybe the only thing you want to use is the children's bulletin. So, um, so you view, view the children's bulletin. There's the children's bulletin. Yep, I'm going to use that. You can see this page. There's four pages because in World, there's actually uh, two children's bulletins uh, per uh, Sunday. If you're using um, World, there's upper grade and lower grade children's bulletins. And so that's why there's four pages, front and back for lower, front and back for upper. Um, but you'll get all four of those in a single download. Uh, so let's download the children's bulletin. That's the download button. And the children's bulletin then appears in my tray. And there's the four pages of the children's bulletin. All right. Now, uh, as, as directors, you don't have to do all the downloading if you don't want. You can assign an item to the calendar or a lesson to the calendar. That's what this little calendars button is for. So if you wanted to, for example, assign a series of children's bulletins for the parish administrator to print on any given Sunday, you can give the parish administrator leader access to World, and you can say, please look for the uh, worship bulletins that are assigned on the various Sundays. And so you would take, a, take this particular item, you would assign it, let's go in the future, I don't know how clogged up these things, July 31st, I'm going to add to the calendar. And so if I'm the parish administrator now, I would just go to the calendar and say, well, I wonder what I need to print for um, uh, July 31st. And then as soon as this comes up, I'm doing webinars, slows things down, unfortunately. Um, July. Look, there's the worship bulletin, which your uh, parish administrator uh, can download. All right, so that's, we'll get into this a little bit more in more detail when we get into the um, step two webinar, because I just, I want to be making plans in step two. And I, actually, I'm, I'm hoping if you're uh, signing into the step two webinar, uh, you will be making some plans in between time and uh, we can uh, walk through any um, troubleshooting that, that needs to happen. Uh, because I, I just want want you to be able to use these resources as well, and I want to be here to be to support you. So that's why the next webinar is all about uh, the, the plans and, and the calendar. Okay, um, I am going to go. Is there anything more about uh, downloading content? You know, again, your leaders can download content from the um, calendar. Uh, anybody can download content from the various tiles on the home page i'll demonstrate that again but as long as we're in this particular sunday and you see this there's nobody here under leaders well you can edit this and you can add your leaders to this particular item so if your leader has to happens to be your um, parish administrator who happened whose name Lori hansen <laughs> we'll just use Lori's name you can assign that to Lori, and then she knows that she's responsible for that particular worship bulletin, and she looks for those and knows that that's her, her content and, and doesn't get cluttered up with everything else. So that's why it's really important to add your leaders and directors as much as you possibly can um, ahead of time if you are making plans and if you are wanting to assign content to people. Because um, you, can't, it, you can't do it in arrears. Unfortunately, I, I can't add somebody now to assign to this lesson. I can do it for a, a future plan that I made, but I've kind of made a break there, haven't I? I've added somebody, and then I made a new plan. So, all right. Um, I'm going to go back now to, to my account, but I'm going into a different area um, of of a different module in Sparkhouse Digital, I'm going into the early childhood module. So if you have an early childhood subscription to Sparkhouse Digital, you can use these things that are called newsletters. See, this is a new category that's only in the early childhood module. If I hit newsletter, Dan Aykroyd, oh, how about that? Um, <laughs> you can add all these children to Sparkhouse Digital. You add them. 
the child by first name, last name, birth date, really important because Sparkhouse Digital automates its delivery based on um, how old the child is. And then you can add recipients. Now, what's important to note is that you can add as many recipients as you want. Well, you can't, not as many, but you can add five recipients for each child. So if parents aren't together, if grandparents want access to these newsletters, you can add uh, five email addresses for each child. Um, so again, it's it's kind of kind of nice to be able to organize things ahead of time before you dive into to something like this. Maybe you maybe you've got a, a form that when a child is baptized or when they're born, the old fashioned cradle roll used to do some of these things where you would uh, have key information about that child. And now we are thinking not only about birth dates, but emails and what have you. And if you have that information of who wants to receive um, uh, this automated new newsletter, then you can set that all up um, the month after they're born. <laughs> and uh, for three years, they'll be receiving um, these wonderful automated newsletters from uh, Sparkhouse Digital. You don't have to lift a finger after that. Does anybody have any other questions about the My Account area um, or uh, about curriculum in general? One of the things that I wanted to give you the opportunity to do in this webinar is if you had some curriculum questions uh, about what to use or what do you, um, what you, perhaps you have used, uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions along those lines that you might have because I. I know that that's another early thing that you ought to be thinking about doing as directors. There's a lot in Sparkhouse Digital. And so as you're assigning leaders and, and um, directors, or you're deciding what age levels you're gonna be using, you really need to decide, if you're, especially if you're planning to use the planner calendar, what curriculum you're planning to use. Um, you can kind of onesie twosie this and go into a curriculum and just download things piece by piece. Joseph helps his family. Then here's all the age levels under each age level, et cetera, et cetera. And so you 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 can do that or you can um, rely on the efficiency of the planner and the calendar to make this happen for you. I've created this document called Steps to Take. And here are some things that you can do to sort of uh, get into the groove of setting up your account. Um, or things for you to consider as you get into your groove for setting your account. I know it says before step one webinar, but certainly you can uh, look at some of those resources now, um, those bullet points now and say, okay, yes, uh, I, I've, I've got to get my roster together and I need to know who I think should have access to Sparkhouse Digital and I'll start working on the leader, um, uh, adding the leaders and directors, this ASAP. Um, the next webinar will all be all about um, the planner and the calendar. And so I really encourage you to start thinking about um, your typical cycle of faith formation. Uh, do you have segments that you plan for? You wanna plan for the entire year? Uh, do you just wanna plan for, let's say, fall, advent, lent? Uh, maybe you've gotta break that up with some um, Christmas programming or what have you. Think about your year and how you break up your year, uh, and then we'll do some planning around the various uh, quarters, seasons, whatever defined plans you want. We can do planning around specific days, you know, Wednesday nights, um, Sunday nights, what have you, uh, different the different age levels, and I add all of that to the calendar. So we're going to be working on planning the calendar and planning in the next session of these director training webinars. And I really, like I said, encourage you to, to think about your year, to think about what you segments of time, what days, uh, what age levels you wanna plan for. And if you've done some of that thinking ahead of time, it'll, it might be more useful uh, when we gather together for the next webinar.